Goldman had blacklisted Bill Huang at the center of this margin, huge, huge margin call, uh, but not for long. What's going on here? It's very interesting. We have to really go back to who Bill Huang is. He was a Oh, someone seen as a bright and talented uh, breakout analyst at uh, Julian Robertson's Tiger back in the day. This was back in the 1990s. Set out to uh, start his own fund, which was Tiger Asia. So therefore, got the uh, title of Tiger Cub. But sometime in 2012, he was dinged by authorities across continents in the U.S. and in Asia for insider trading charges. Uh, the firm actually copped to a uh, charge of wire fraud and... Uh, had to return all outside money and became a family office. And, and that really was what became Archigo's capital management. Uh, in the last few years, since that uh, setback, that family office has grown into a big force. When senior Goldman executives wanted to do business with this firm because they were seeing that Archigo's was throwing out a lot of commission and interest to uh, rival dealers, Goldman compliance would not let them do business. Something changed in the last couple of years. Goldman has now gone from blacklisting him to becoming one of his biggest uh, financiers. And that is what has landed them in the center, in the nexus of this margin mayhem that has played out over the last few days. Sheree, what was it that changed in particular? Was it just the idea that he'd sort of been punished enough during that period? Uh, we're still in early stages of reporting this out. One theory definitely is the insider trading charges go back to trades that were carried out in 2008 and 2009. So by the time Goldman decided to change its policies, it had been over 10 years. And, of course, uh, uh, let's be clear, there were other banks in the street that seemed to be more than happy to be doing business with this family office. But what exactly prompted the change? We, we don't have enough clarity on what led to that U-turn. Also, what led to this huge margin call? I mean, overall, the markets have been doing pretty well. Uh, that's right, Sherry, and this is something, this is a question that has vexed everyone. Uh, we do know that middle of the week, Viacom had an equity deal. The stock price uh, slumped after that, and there has been a lot of talk that that might have been a trigger to a number of the moves. We're talking about uh, the, the Bill Huang's fund is one that a lot of people have told us the strategy was uh, big positions, concentrated positions in, 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 in a small bunch of names that operated with a high level of leverage. And once the stock started going in the other direction, you had banks that were getting antsy. And some of the biggest names on Wall Street were prime brokers to this fund. But once the margin limits were breached and one or two of the banks decided to exercise their right to default, it seems that the others followed suit. And all of a sudden, you had all of these big players in the market with a lot of collateral in the form of stock that was held by in the name of Archigos that was making its way into the market. And that kind of drove some of the panic selling that led to the stock price on a number of names from U.S. media companies to Chinese uh, corporate giants uh, slumping initially. Some have rebounded, others not so much. And that is why we're all waiting with anticipation, heading into this Asian Open and to the rest of the week as to how a lot of these names are going to trade, especially in the early part of the week.